Good morning. Happy Easter. It's Easter. So I'm continuing with a talk on relativity. At some stage I'll base a talk on relativity, you know, for graduate students who understand a little bit of at least tensor, at least vector calculus and teach tensor calculus and so on and so forth and do all the nuts and bolts. This is a more philosophical yet mathematical discussion. We're talking about general relativity. Now, general relativity purports to be a theory of um, gravity, and uh, it's an extension of special relativity. Einstein came out with special relativity in 1905, and general relativity, give or take, 1915. Roughly speaking, special relativity talks about physics working in inertial frames of reference, that is, Frames that are not accelerated. Free fall frames. You don't feel any weight. Accelerated frames could be real accel really accelerated frames like in a rocket. Or here in this room, because I'm feeling an acceleration, which is due to gravity. Accelerated frames. So if you talk about a theory that talks about phenomenon in accelerated frames of reference, you're including automatically either a real acceleration or gravity. That will come into the conversation. Now, general relativity basically has a geometrical point of view of the world. That that is true or not, I'm a little bit skeptical. I don't really think it's entirely true. For example, you can create a geometrical point of view of thermodynamics using the exact same geometry of George Berlin Riemann. So two characters for our show today are Albert Einstein, 1879 to 1955, and Bernard Riemann, George Bernard Riemann, 1826 to 1866, who invented the mathematics necessary for the theory. So general relativity and gravity. First of all, special relativity. This stuff to do with special relativity and general relativity mathematically is related to the idea of coordinate transformations. Now what's a coordinate transformation? You can have a transformation of coordinates from let's say Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates, or you can have the following. Take an example where we have an XY coordinate system. It could be this board. Look, Y and X as measured down up there and down here, right? It's a grid. In this coordinate system, coordinate system Pythagoras' theorem holds. S squared equals S x squared plus y squared. In this coordinate system all parallel lines, if projected, never meet.
and the sum of the angles inside a right angled triangle add up to 180 degrees. A, B, and C add up to 180 degrees. And P, Q, and R. P squared equals Q squared plus R squared. Pythagoras' theorem. And Pythagoras' theorem, there's where it says we take any angle in there, call it theta. Cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is 1. This is really Pythagoras' theorem. So, now let's take another coordinate system that is situated down here. We'll use a different colour. Okay, blue will have to do. Now, there's a black coordinate system and a blue one. Now, a point, let's say on the board, I'll stick it over here, can be represented by two coordinates. The x and the y, as speaks to the black one, and the x dash and the y dash as speaks to the blue one. So let's clean the board. Actually, I'm going to shift the coordinate system back. I won't take these guys down. History to me is pivotal in all of this stuff. So here's the black coordinate system. It's still there. And here's the blue one. The black one and the blue one. Now we'll say that this distance is S. And here's our point. Point in the Cartesian coordinate system. It could have the position 3, 4 as measured out and up in the black system. And x dash, y dash as measured in the blue system. Now I'm going to change this. So there's its x coordinate in the black system. There's its y coordinate in the black system. There's its y coordinate dash in the blue system. And there's the x dash coordinate in the blue system. This is short, this is long. This one and this one are the same. So we can write down straight away that x equals x dash. Sorry, that's wrong. Y and y dash are the same, the same value. I'm going to drop the colors eventually. But look at this. 
this x dash is smaller than x. Here's x. Here's x dash. It's smaller by this much. This distance s. S cuts this one short. Now here are from kinematics. Distance is speed times time for a constant speed. Sorry, the blue frame can be moving at a constant speed v, in which case the s is vt. But it can also be accelerating with a constant rate of a, in which case s is getting bigger with an acceleration. This vt here situation, that would correspond to a special relativity situation, and this one could but it's not exactly the case, but it's a good analogy to including a non-inertial frame of reference. It's an accelerating frame. It has to be a general relativity. Now, what do we mean by that? It means, how does light behave in either one of those things? Because the beginning of the trouble was in light, the theory of light. But let's finish up these transformations first. inertial situation and the inertial situation is known as Galilean situation. The situation, they use the word transformation. And a transformation is just how you speak to one frame from another, how the values of a point in one system can be measured in another. Now this situation here, there's no word that I can think of for that, but it's an accelerated frame of reference. If the blue one was accelerating down the road, you'd have to use this to measure the x-coordinate. But if it wasn't accelerating, you'd have to use that. Now what about time? Well, in Newton's time, time was thought to be the same no matter what way you were moving. Okay? In Galileo's time, the same thing. Time in one frame is the same as another. So that means that this, some, somebody carries a clock in here, and someone carries a clock in here. They're both, if they're set off at the same time, an hour later they will both read us an hour late. Okay? They will both read the same times. Time is absolute. So now we're going to summarize.
Now I'm doing away with the colors. Now I could add a Z in and out of the board, it would not make any difference. It would have the same length in both frames. It's only one that is along the direction of motion. Now I've chosen the x-axis to be the direction of motion just to simplify the calculations. But it could be at any other angle you want. So these are what are called the Galilean, Galilean transformations. And here was the problem. Using these equations, the wave equation of light, Maxwell's equation, that predicts this existence of light, whose late nature turns out to be electromagnetic in origin, you can find the speed of light by taking the electric constant and the magnetic constant from elementary physics and evaluating them, and it turned out to be the speed of light. Okay, so the, that equation does not work with about Galilean tra transformations. Things called Lorentz transformations do work for that case. Lorentz transformations are something that's coming up, and we will talk about those in a minute. Okay? Actually, I'll just quickly tell you where we're heading. Lorentz transformations are things that keep this the same. Well, actually, it's premature. That's a good place to stop for this beginning talk.